Slam Dunk is a legendary sports manga that has achieved peak sports, and today, the Subversion King and King of Deconstruction will show you just how amazing it is. Slam Dunk's first accomplishment is being old. It started in 1990, and everyone knows that old manga are immediately classics, making Slam Dunk peak fiction and peak sports. I could end the video right here, but I'll continue to show you all just how amazing this manga is. Its art is phenomenal, breathtaking, heart-stopping, and life-taking. I almost died just looking at it. That's how good it is. The art is so photorealistic. Like Berserk, in an interview, Inoue said that he creates real-life models for the characters and setting in his mind and simply draws them on paper, which is why his art is so good. It's so realistic. Every artist that has ever picked up a pen or brush is envious of his artwork. They even have recent interviews stating their jealousy of his realistic art. It's so realistic. Everyone knows that good manga art is defined by how realistic it is. Things like panel flow, camera angle, spacing, posing, and cinematography mean absolutely nothing. The realisticness of a manga's artwork is what matters the most. Art is honestly more important than the actual story. The story could be about people going about their daily lives, and this manga would still be a masterpiece. It's so realistic. Another factor that makes Slam Dunk peak sports is this focus on Yankee plot lines. In Japan, Yankees are basically juvenile delinquents. Slam Dunk's main characters are Yankees, and they get into a lot of fights. The plot spends a lot of time on these parts of the story, especially in the beginning. In fact, they spend so much time that you'd be convinced that this is a Yankee manga. Now, maybe you're asking, how does focusing on something unrelated to the sport make Slam Dunk peak sports? Obviously, it's because it has the creativity to not focus on the sport and subvert our expectations. You come into a manga titled Slam Dunk, a basketball move, and the volume covers have people playing basketball, so your expectation is to see basketball, but it pulls a fast one on you and focuses on Yankee hijinks for a good chunk of the manga. It's genius. There is a quick break for the first basketball match from chapter 26 to 48, but after that, the manga goes right back into the Yankee goodness. In fact, there is an entire gang brawl that goes from chapter 56 to 67. That'd be about 5 episodes in an anime adaptation. Sakuragi and Rukawa are throwing hands and beating up the ops. It makes me think I'm reading a battle manga rather than a sports manga. But sadly, this is the last of its kind and afterwards, the manga goes full on into basketball. But it was subversive while it lasted. Slam Dunk is 276 chapters and 67 out of 276 is almost 25% which means that about a fourth of the manga is Yankee Adventures. The comedy in this manga is phenomenal. It often involves the art style becoming simplified and a character, usually Sakuragi, doing something wacky rather than a setup and a punchline. Get this, one time Sakuragi is drawn simplified and he moves the ball around his body quickly. Funny shit I've ever seen. Actually, that wasn't one time. It probably happened like five times and it was just as funny each time. Another amazing thing about the jokes is their timing. I'd be invested in the match that's happening, but the manga has the expertise to pause that match for a gag, which is exactly what I needed at the time. It knew that I was getting too invested in the match and needed a break for a hilarious gag. It does this several times. Peak comedy. I've never laughed so hard in my life. Next is the amount of games. There are 6 matches in total in this manga if I remember correctly. There's the Ryonan practice, Shoyo, Kainan, Ryonan rematch, Toyotama, and then the last team, Sano. In the Kanagawa prelims, the first four rounds are summarized. Takezoto, which is between Kainan and Ryonan, is summarized. Their match against Iowa is just summarized as them losing badly. In Haikyuu, 276 was during the match against Inarizaki. This is Haikyuu's 11th match and that's only counting official matches, no practices. Kuroko had 20 by this chapter and that's only counting official matches. I'm not sure how many matches were summarized or skipped, but I know that each of the members of the Generation of Miracles is played against at least once which makes 5 matches, Aomine's team is played against at least twice, which makes 6, and then Aomine played against Kise, which makes 7. By 1.43, Ahiru already had 4 full matches. Slam Dunk clearly has a slower pace for having matches, part of which is thanks to the Yankee Adventures at the start, but that's what makes this manga brilliant. It only gives the viewer a small amount of what they came for, which is subversive and indicative of peak fiction and peak sports. Finally, the manga starts 2 romantic plot lines that go absolutely nowhere. The first is Sakuragi liking Haruko, and the second is Miyagi liking Ayako. Haruko is oblivious to Sakuragi's feelings for the entire manga, and by the end, they still aren't together. He even has a scene where he sorta of confesses, but this obviously goes nowhere. Miyagi is more explicit about his feelings, but this also goes nowhere, because they don't end up together. So what was the point of starting these plot lines that weren't going to be wrapped up? Subversion. Most good writers would go somewhere with this, 
but Inoue is a genius and subverts expectations by doing absolutely nothing with them. In conclusion, Slam Dunk achieved peak fiction by being old, having realistic art, focusing on Yankees rather than the sport, having rolling on the floor levels of comedy, a low amount of games, and romances that go nowhere. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and help me revolutionize the manga industry by buying my manga and spreading the word. All important links will be in the description.